Bum, ba, da, dum, bum, bum. Greetings all, Last Outrider here with a continuation video on who are the lost and forgotten Primarchs. Continuation because there were some points that I didn't make or stress strongly enough in my first video causing some confusion. I would like to end that confusion right now by telling you precisely what we know about the second and the eleventh Primarch. In my other video, I made it clear that I wasn't going to create any fluff. I was going to base what, my, what we know about the Primarchs purely upon what has been repeated in all of the fluff about the Primarchs. Some things about the lost Primarchs are only said once. But there are some things about the Lost Primarchs that have been repeated over and over again every time we hear about them. And if you limit yourself to only those things that have been repeated multiple times, we're left with only a few con conclusions about what could happen to them. Let's go over what those things are now. First, we have what Games Workshop has said about the two Primarchs. Games Workshop has said that they created the two missing Primarchs as a plot device, as a purposeful mystery in the 40k universe to create something that players can uh, argue about or add into their own campaigns to, to, to make it so that the 40k universe is not clearly com defined by Games Workshop. And because of this, GW is never going to tell us who the missing Primarchs are, unless they've changed their mind about their purpose. That's thing one. Thing two. We know that the Primarchs didn't do anything bad. Meaning that everybody, all of the brother Primarchs, the Emperor, the Custodes, the Sigilet, Malkador, they all spoke highly, <coughs> sorry, highly of the Primarchs. Um, so because of that, we know they didn't turn traitor. They didn't um, become corrupted or anything like that, because if that had been the case, people probably would not have been saying good things about them. Um, another thing, we know that they didn't have bad gene seeds. We know this because Belisarius Cowell stated when he made the Primaris Marines that there was nothing wrong with the missing Primarchs gene seeds. Whatever faults they had had to do with the Primarchs themselves, not with their gene seed. So because of that, they didn't become corrupted. Those are the things we know. Now, without making any assumptions, or as few assumptions as possible, basically applying Occam's razor to the situation, you can say that there's only a few possible outcomes of what happened to the missing Primarchs. First, we look at their names. The Lost and the Forgotten. Now, the second Primarch is called the Lost. And I believe this is connected to also to the fact that we know he took over his legion. We know he was one of the first eight Primarchs to become active during the early Great Crusade. Uh, and we know that the second legion was absorbed by the Ultramarines. Okay. We also know that he explored Necron ruins on, on the galaxy's edge. We don't know why he was at the galaxy's edge, what he found in these Necron tombs, but I believe that that is a good plot source 
for saying how he became the lost Primarch. It could be possible that he encountered some Necron technology that somehow makes him inaccessible to us, even beyond the Emperor's ability to bring him back. Uh, and that would make him lost. That's all I'm saying. Um, we know the eleventh Primarch. We, I don't know if he took over his legion or how long he or what he did in the Great Crusade, but we do know that he caused some trouble for the word bearers, because the Galverbeck made a comment that they could solve a lot of trouble if they just got rid or dealt with the eleventh Primarch when they went back in time. Okay, so that indicates that the eleventh Primarch was some type of problem for the word bearers. Uh, but that doesn't indicate why that he would have gone away. Now, again, he, the eleventh Primarch is called the Forgotten, not the Lost. Now, some people think that Russ went and killed the eleventh Primarch for some reason, but Remember, Russ went and killed Magnus the Red, too. And Magnus is not dead. I think this is an important point. Going and killing a Primarch's body does not kill the Primarch itself. Death in 40K. When your body dies, your spirit, or whatever you want to call it, goes into the warp. And we know that Primarchs are sufficiently strong enough psychic entities that all of them can survive in the warp as a warp entity without a physical body. So if we can assume that killing Magnus just turned him into a warp entity, killing any of the Primarchs probably just turns them into a warp entity. They continue to exist in the warp. Vulcan has been killed thousands of times. Omegon and Alpharius, whether it's true or not, have been killed at least ten times each, probably. Um, they had an entire Vindicar assassin. Six, Vind what, five or six Vindicar assassins just to go out and kill Oh my God, and Alpharius as many times as they can. Who else? Um, basically, Primarchs have died a lot. Uh, obviously, Horus. But they're going to say that isn't Horus when he came back. So, the Primarchs don't die in the classical sense of the word of you destroy their body and they cease to exist. Now, I look at the word forgotten Primarch and that's what I find interesting about it. I find interesting because forgotten means that he's still there He's still shaping 40K history. We just don't remember who he is. The lost Primarch is out of the picture. Now, if you want to believe that both Primarchs are out of the picture, then who they are doesn't matter, because they would just be a brief footnote in early Great Crusade history, and then had no effect or impact upon 40K events after that. But a forgotten Primarch would indicate that he is still there behind the scenes affecting events. And that is why I chose to call the forgotten Primarch Omegon. Because now you're dealing with Alpha Legion. And when you're dealing with Alpha Legion, anything is possible. Is he dead? Is he alive? Who is he? Where is he? What he was doing? Everything about the Alpha Legion is just as mysterious as the 11th Primarch. I think we can agree upon that. Um, some 
people like to refer to the Erebus' chaos-induced vision to Horus, um, where they said Omegon and Alpharius were in the same capsule. But this is not an event that actually happened. This is a chaos-induced vision. Okay? And if you want to base anything, the only thing you can be sure about a chaos-induced vision is that it's probably a lie. The only thing you're seeing is exactly what the chaos gods want you to see, and therefore they want you to believe it. For all we know, the reason why Erebus showed two of them in one capsule is because that's what Erebus believed. Uh, he, he's essentially creating the whole vision himself. <coughs> the point is, it's not an actual event. It's just a dream. And it was a lie. Right? It was a, a dream to show the false emperor wanting just to be a megalomaniac and achieve godhood. We know this is not true. Therefore, the dream cannot be accurate. So I don't use that dream as evidence of anything. Now, the other thing that interests me is that everybody refers to there only being 20 Primarchs in number. We can accept that Alpharius and Omegon are identical twins, but that still means if you were to line up all the Primarchs, you would have 21. There is no escaping that fact. Alpharius and Omegon are two different Primarchs. Even if you want to say they share a twin soul, there is still two physical bodies going off and doing separate things. That means that there are 21 Primarchs. If you don't believe that Omegon is the 11th forgotten Primarch. Now, Guileman on McCrag carved a special table for the Emperor and all his Primarchs. It has 20 chairs and one chair for the Emperor. Why does everybody hate Omegon this much? Hmm? Is, is he just supposed to stand in the corner? Why does everybody say there's only 20 brothers? Why does nobody count Omegon as a Primarch. I ask this question only if you believe that Omegon is not the forgotten Primarch. Now, if you accept my idea that Omegon is the forgotten Primarch, that there are actually only 20 Primarchs, then this makes sense. This is all part of the Alpha Legion. They are just as mysterious, just as forgotten. We don't know where the Alpha Legion's homeworld is. We don't know anything about how they were founded. We don't know anything about them at all, pretty much, in the early Crusades. Uh, we don't know if Alpharius and Omegon even were found on the same homeworld. We have one vague reference to Segmentum Pacifica having a homeworld of a lost brother on a Forge World book map. Now, whether this lost brother is um, one of the missing Primarchs, or whether it's the Alpha Legion's world, we don't know. But we know there's something in... Um, Segmentum Pacifica. So, to, since the Alpha Legion is so mysterious, and since the 11th Primarch is simply called the Forgotten, 
not the lost or whatever. Uh, and since we are only told that there are 20 Primarchs in total, I tend to believe in my 40k world that Omegan is the 11th Primarch and that the second Primarch was lost to some type of Necron um, tomb world situation because that requires the least amount of assumptions and just seems to make sense. We know almost nothing about Alpharius, which means we know less to nothing about Omegon. And for some reason, all of the Primarchs want to keep it that way. So I believe this fits in nicely with Alpha Legion's um, history and play style and the mystery that they like to create about themselves. I can clearly l see that they would be, you know, Alpharius is the 20th Primarch and Omegon is the 11th Primarch and they wrapped both of them up in mystery. We only know strictly what we need to know about Alpharius. We don't even know if Alpharius is his name. I mean, we know nothing about them. So, why not just say, like I said, this is just how I see it. I hope that explains more of what I'm talking about in the video, uh, my first video, and why I came to these conclusions. The final thing I wanted to add to this is we don't know what happened to the 11th Legion. We know that the 2nd Legion was absorbed by the Ultramarines. Now, if somebody can find somewhere that it says the Ultramarines also absorbed the 11th Legion, then I'll say, thank you for pointing that out to me. Now we know what happened to, now I know what happened to the 11th Legion. But I don't remember anything that says that. Which means that the elef something had to happen to the 11th Legion. We know there's nothing wrong with their dream gene seeds, so they were absorbed by another Legion. Now, if Omegon and Alpharius were each given their own Legion, because there are only 20 Primarchs, and there are only 20 Legions, not 21, Okay, not one legion shared between twin brothers. That's never been said. It's just said 20 legions, 20 primarchs, Omegon and Alpharius would have to count as two of those primarchs. Therefore, it stands to reason that Omegon would have gotten his legion. And if that's the case, then Alpha Legion again, who we never know the exact size of, is a combination of the 11th and the 20th legions. Unless somebody can show me where the 11th legion was absorbed into. Okay. In which case I would still say that that's great. So considering all of these things, I believe that is the most likely and supportable explanation for who the lost and forgotten Primarchs are. I hope I made myself more clear this time, and until next time, bye!